I'm writing a theme song for the rundown. I'm writing a theme song for the Rundown. Do, 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 do. I'm writing a theme song for the rundown today. Damn. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I love that. Welcome to Rundown. Oh, what's your name? Yes. And myself, Carrie Kaufman. Uh, we're here to talk about education in um, Nevada, in Las Vegas, in, in particular. Uh, and uh, there was a board meeting last night, so we're always on after a board meeting. Uh, but we want to talk about something else first, Tamika. We want to talk about the Black yes. Census. Tell, tell us about that. Hello, everybody. So we do here at Make Virgin Nevada, we have the Black Census that we need your help. It is a survey. It's going to take about five to ten minutes of your time, but we need all of this information so we can continue to advocate for our communities. So please check out um, the link at makeitworknevada.org. That's at makeitworknevada.org. And um, please fill out this Black Census. If you are Black, you identify as Black, we need, we need your support. We need to hear from you so we can continue to do the great work. So, that's so you, what that's use this, about. you use these these numbers to advocate with the state, advocate with the county and the city, um, and, and nationally, and nationally, and nationally um, about about um, all things that impact our lives and our communities. So, if it's about child care, if it's about workforce development, mm -hmm. if it's about health and medical, like we need to know where we need to um, increase our efforts. So please visit our website at makeitworknevada.org and fill out the Black Census. It's only going to be about five to ten minutes of your time, but it's going to make an impact nationwide. So share that with your friends, with your families, at your Sunday dinners, at your cookouts, at the domino game, the spade table. Let them know that we need um, their support. Okay. How are you doing? Okay. I'm doing okay. Good. I'm doing okay. It's been kind of a rush, rush morning. It's been a very busy week, uh, but it's been a fun week. Lots of stuff going on. No, really. Yeah. <laughs> stuff like stuff like what? Like what has happened? What has happened? What has happened? Well, um, you know, there 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 are a few things that happened. I know that uh, the 1865 women did uh, a, a Kiko Cooks and Shante Marshall did. Um, uh, a meeting, a town hall meeting with a a, a, a charter school, legacy traditional, Leg legacy traditional. Yes. Their teacher, there was a fourth grade teacher who was fired. Parents got all fired up about that, pun not intended. And then, um, and then they started hearing about other things that were happening in the school, and they got angry. Yes. Um, and it feels like what it, what it feels like is it's a toxic work environment. Mm -hmm teachers either leave or are pushed out because of this toxic environment and then favored teachers are put in and then it, the kids are hurt because the kids don't have teachers for like this person was hired was fired 20 days before the end of the school year and they never told make, her why doesn't make any sense right? Yeah, right you know i had been talking to a parent um at the school i actually went to a meeting at the school with with this parent um because her child was i mean it really feels like the child was being targeted you know, uh -huh. and trying to put things in his file that were not true. And oh. so I'm happy that this parent, um, you know, wanted to be proactive and advocate for her child because it's like these things just don't sound right. And the stories just kept changing. And so I'm so thankful for organizations like No Racism, no Racism in School 1865 for really taking the lead and taking charge and making stuff happen. Yeah. So, I mean, from those conversations, I know that a survey went out to families. Mm -hmm. I guess the feedback wasn't so, so favorable. Mm -hmm. I mean, the principal was- uh, Fired, left that day. Oh, was, was fired, put on leave or put fired? On leave. Was she, was I believe, she, well, she may have been put on leave pending an investigation, you're right. Um, but that was Wednesday, when the press conference, Wednesday, my days are getting mixed up. When the, the press conference happened, and I will tell you, we were outside in Goins Park it was, and I'm pounding on the table, so I shouldn't be doing that. Um, uh, and it was incredibly windy that day. Like literally, I almost got blown over a couple times. And I am not a wisp. 
And um, and then uh, and lots of people were there. Lots of parents were there. Lots of press were there. So I'm sure that people saw this on the news. I saw it on a, on a few news stations. Um, and it was and I got names of people and videos of people so that I could do a deeper dive into this. But um, the problem is, is that this particular my somebody, my daughter. Hi, daughter. Um, uh, this particular school is not part of CCSD. It's not a charter school that's part of and overseen by CCSD. It's its own charter school. It's based in Arizona. It's got well, three charters here. In, I mean, but in that's Vegas. also that, I mean, that may not be a bad thing uh, because they it sounds like they're listening to parents and family and community, and they're willing to do investigations to make stuff happen um, timely. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So who you know that yeah. might be a bad thing. We will see. We will see. Um, so what else we got here? We had a. Um, a we had a meeting last night. It was, I am really happy to say, one of the most boring school board meetings I have ever been at. Uh, and, and that's... I mean, I kept trying to watch it and, you know, I was like, and I go back on and watch and I'm like, what is happening today? So it felt like that inside too? Yeah, yeah. No, no. Totally felt like that inside. And, and part of the reason it was boring is because so in the last school board meeting, which was two weeks ago, um, now this is one of the things that the what I have what I have dubbed the people I've dubbed the racist anti-maskers, but now I have to I have to change that to be to say the racist homophobes or the racist uh, homosexists, which is a, a term I prefer. Um, and so in the last meeting, uh, one of them came up to the. Dias. And this is a pattern, right? Like there's a, there's like three or four and they come up and they say increasingly worse things. And then when they want to leave, they don't want to stay for the whole meeting. Like who wants to stay for the whole meeting? <laughs> Me, right? Like I'm the only fool who wants to do that. So, um, so they come up to the dais and, uh, and they say increasingly worse things. And then the last person just goes off the rails. And then they all get kicked out, but they say these horrible things as they're getting kicked out. And so it happened last time, but the off the rails was directed at a teacher. It was directed at a queer teacher uh, who was there. And then when they left, um, another one of them directed her comments at this queer teacher. Uh, you know, use the word pervert, uh, the F word, um, mm. you know, groomers, like all this stuff, right? Um, and and actually, they used the F word. They threw the F word at a freshman who had gotten up to to, oh to do a public gosh. comment earlier that day. So um, one of them last night never even made it into the building. The other one made it into the boardroom, but when uh, people saw her, they were like, "Oh, how did she get in?" And then the police took her out. And I was told later that they were trespassed for harassment of staff because that teacher is a staff member. And so, because okay. I was like, it's a pattern. When you see a pattern, you don't have to let them into the meeting. But they just they just took harassment. So yay! Wow. So, so that's, that's part of what game. made it not boring. Um, but also, you know, like they were just they were just getting briefed on school safety statistics mm -hmm. and a survey that had gone out to uh, to to kids about whether they feel safe in school. Safe. Um, one of the things that Danielle Ford brought up, uh, they all seem to be like, I don't, I don't trust these statistics. Trust like, and we... one of the things Danielle Ford brought up was there's, they all, the, the questions are very general. It doesn't say, do you feel safe in school? Right. right? Like they may, it's kids like, may be like, well, yeah, this feel, is a safe school. The students feel but be, safe in school. But, but because about, that person bullies me or because I'm queer, or because whatever, I don't feel safe in school, but it's a safe school. So they answer the safe school question, but it may not apply to them, which I thought was an interesting insight. So there was that, and then they talked about absenteeism, and I'd like to sort of dig into that a lot more. There are a lot more kids that are absent now than were before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, so something is going on at the root. Something is going on in people's homes, or the pandemic just made them realize that they don't they don't want to go to school. They or don't need school. Or something going on at the schools and kids don't want to go. Yeah, right. Or something's going on at the schools and kids don't. And go. kids don't want to go. Yeah. There was definitely something that was happening in, in one of the case. things. 
one of the interesting things about the safety numbers is that kids felt safest during the pandemic when they weren't with other kids. That should tell you a lot. That's that says a whole lot. Yeah. <laughs> You know, yeah, I think that that's something that um, really needs to be looked into, like, you know, when students who typically had pretty decent um, attendance prior to a pandemic and now their attendance is, uh, you know, is wavering what's going on, you know, at home, but also what may be going on in school. Are they being bullied by another mm -hmm. student? Mm -hmm. Are they being bullied by a staff member? Mm -hmm. You know, or do, or do they feel that their educational needs are not being met mm -hmm. at the school? Mm -hmm. Are the classrooms overcrowded? Is there a long-term there... sub there who right. are there is enough not teachers? teaching the subject matter? Right. Like there's so many things that like students may feel it's a waste of their time to be there and I could still do this work at home. Right. You know? And there was one kid who um who the students go first when at, at when they're doing public comment and yes. there's one student actually I think he may have been a, a just graduated student who said um, I oh no he was a student he said I show up if I if I get to my school five minutes late I am going to be truant and if I'm truant more than three times. I get increasing punishments, like I get I get detention and maybe suspension or what have you. But if I miss class, I can actually, you know, get a note sent in saying, "Oh, I had a doctor." And it was appointment. excuse. And so a lot of kids, when they when they're late, they just sit in their car until the next class, until the second class, and then they go in because the punishment is less for missing class than being late to class, which I think is so CCSD, right? Like it is so backward. Um, but but that's that that in a nutshell explains everything that I have ever reported about CCSD. So yeah. So that's something. I mean, kids know they you know, yeah, kids they don't know, know how to manipulate, but they know how to yeah, you know, and they don't the system for what it is. They don't take BS. No. Right. If it's BS, they're like, no, you no. Know, yes, we're being talked to. Phil is talking to us. Yeah. Phil. 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 Thank Phil. you, Phil. Uh, but yesterday, my brother had their senior assembly, and it was in the morning when he had texted me, we can't decorate our caps, and he was just so passionate about it. And then he sends me a video, because then a the follow-up message was, they said that teachers are not going to sign off if they have a C, a D, or an F for the for them to graduate and walk on stage. And he's like, they what? said this and that. And I said, let me know. I'll show it to the school, right? And then he sends me a video. He got up and asked a question in front of everybody. And I was so proud of him. He said, well, can you please explain to me why you mean that we cannot get signed off if we have a C? And she explained it. I think it was in one of the admin. And he's like, well, I'm just going to tell you that you need to learn how to race things because you have all of us worried. And everyone was just like, yeah. That's right. <laughs> but uh, I appreciate for school board. how folks, <laughs> because how she... folks are just so much more. I would never have seen that, you know, when I was in school. So seeing how they're a little bit more active and they're starting to learn how to, uh, you know, speak up. And taking agency. Though, yes, like, and even the rational kids from yesterday, I was like, yes, I should have brought my brother, you know, but they, they're so passionate to the point that they're starting to be more civically engaged. Yes. It, it's, they're learning that it's more than just mm -hmm. So it, it's interesting, the, the rancho kids, that's, uh, first of all, yay! I'm very proud of your brother. Second of all, C is a is a passing grade, That's what I said. right? Like it's yeah, it's average, it's okay. right? Um, <laughs> right. So second and, and third of all, the Rancho kids. Now this is a very interesting thing to me. Um, they wanted to be able to wear Puerto Rican uh, flags or Mexican flags or. Uh, some sort of decorate something on their on their things that represent hats their culture. that represent their culture, mm -hmm. right? Um, this this is another thing with CCSD, right? A rule is a rule, and it's going to affect everybody. What CCSD doesn't want is people to to come in with political stuff, right? They don't want a, uh, somebody to come in with uh, with MAGA gear. They don't want uh, somebody to come in with uh, uh, abortion shirts, right? They don't um, because it will happen. 
because of what happened, which we'll talk about in a second. But um, so they don't want people to come in uh, with their political statements. And this is what is partly wrong with our culture, that we think statements like I think, but if I come in with a gay pride pin, I am making a statement about myself, uh, who I am as a person, right? Um, uh, if you come in with a BLM pin, you are coming in with, with something that, that, you, that is about you as a person, right? Um, and and, and we, we confuse political statements with, with who we actually are. Um, and, uh, and, I, and, I, and that, is, that has always been a problem for me. Like I am, I am not going to undermine my humanity because of your white supremacy. So that's, but, but go on with what happened. No, I was saying it will happen, but oh. what happened? <laughs> I said it will happen. You know, if they, if they do, you know, say, yes, you can, yes, you can decorate your couch. Yes, you can wear, right. you know, things that are for your culture. You well, know, they're going to come in with, you know, I mean, we all the things that we don't want in the schools. Right? For sure. I mean, that's how the fights were right, right, started right. Yes. the beginning of the school year. It was because folks were showing up with Well, you know, that is the that is exactly it. Like uh, most of the fights when you look into them, they started because somebody called somebody else the, a white kid called a black kid the N-word. Like mm -hmm. that's really um so yes, that is what's starting them. But no, the abortion thing, there was apparently a teacher, I didn't see this who's an anti-abortion person, showed a bunch of fifth graders, sixth graders, um, a, a very graphic video it was, that a, was acting something out. It was a video acting, yeah, acting out the act of abortion. It was, it was, it was art. It was art. It, but it's like, no, like, no. You know, they said it was yeah, a bunch of screaming. And, is art too, they said it was but, screaming you know, and wailing. You know, and I'm like, why? They're traumatized. Yeah. Why? why and they, they were traumatized. Yeah. I mean, what school was this? I don't know. Um, oh, I can't remember. But, it was on the news. But yeah, wait right. a second. Okay, we're gonna do our we gotta thing find here. It. We gotta do we're our research. Look it up, up here. This is a cool um, thing about being uh, live and having the research. Teacher shows anti-abortion. But how's everyone, let me see if there's any comments. I'm so sorry. We have Mimi Hall. Hey. Hey, uh, hey. Jenna Robertson. Oh, we yes. got Ms. Cat. Maddie White did something Hello, on it. Oh, um, Maddie White from Channel 5 did something on it. Uh, so, but even with Mimi Hall, I think that there should be some type of hybrid model when we're talking about school education moving forward. Like, it's still a way to reimagine education. It, I mean, everybody does not have to, you know. Yeah. So the YouTube uh, video but parents yes. referred to shows a showed a group of young performers on stage pretending to be an unborn fetus. At one point, writhing and screaming in pain while pretending to be terminated by a doctor. Which is absolutely untrue, right? Like, you know, the, uh, the, the fetuses don't feel pain at that stage. Fifth graders? Do we know? Sixth. Uh, it was at Thurman White. Duh. <laughs> so what happened to the teacher? I don't know. Okay, so it was at Thurman White, which is a magnet school. It's a performing arts magnet school, which is very interesting. Uh, Parents said their students were now traumatized. Um, quote, quote. I want to um, be traumatized. But I want to see the video. Uh, I, I want to see the video. Said it was so disturbing. If anybody has the video, send us the video so we can see it. Like, I, I, I want to see it, but it's still, it's like, it just seems tasteless. Like, it, it just, no. Wow. No. I, there's no link to the video, which of is course very not. interesting. Um, interesting. So I don't know, um, what, the I don't know what the point of it was. Um, but also, you know, like, it's just simply not true that, that, that some of the six grade that's another class. line that's out in, into our, you know, fetuses don't feel pain. There's, there's not, let, until you're you in know, the third trimester. Know. How do you know that? They have um, they have tested these things. 
Maybe just don't feel pain in in the, in the first few weeks, for sure. So, <laughs> I, I listen. I'm no scientist. I'm no scientist. At the end of the day, it's like I just I just feel that's just kind of tasteless to you know show show a video to students. Like like, what's the what was the purpose? I guess that's where I'm at. What was the purpose? What was the reason? Yeah. <laughs> Well, what what was the reason? Like, well, okay. Yes. What was the like, reason? And sometimes I just feel oh. like they want to be on the news. Yeah, I know. It's kind of a crazy thing. So let's, um, uh, on news, you said something about news. So let's talk about, um, we got some national coverage. We got we got two pieces of national coverage. One was the, 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 the um, board meeting a couple of weeks ago with this crazy person talking before they all got thrown out. Um, oh, uh, that Did we ever saw the video? That totally went viral on Twitter. And so, great, this is Vegas, yay! Um, and then uh, NPR did a, a story, NPR National did a seven and a half minute story, which for NPR is a very long story, on, um, on the violence in schools. They came to it a little late. So they didn't, you know, they started out with, you know, a few weeks ago, a teacher was raped, um, but, and almost murdered in her classroom. And, um, and they, but then they talked to a bunch of people. They talked to some, a student, uh, they talked to, they started out with Cherish Morgan, who is a, a, an active parent out of Desert Oasis. Um, they talked to Ariane uh, Pritchard, who is a teacher in Bonanza. Um, they, uh, they they talked to Jara, um, and they talked to one of the police officers about what they're seeing, and that was actually really a pretty good interview. Um, it was it was a comprehensive interview. It didn't really delve deep, but it gave us a good picture, gave other people a good picture of what's going on here. Um, and if you want to know more, you know you can always look it up. So, I, so I, it was nice to get the national coverage, but you know. Really, can't we get a national yeah, coverage can't. for for great things? <laughs> <laughs> like right. there's a student that has the highest GPA. What I saw on the news. Okay. Research it. Okay, okay, research it. I'm doing what I'm told. Um, <laughs> it was a student that had she she had the highest GPA. Yes, uh, I can't remember. I know she just got accepted into Harvard. It's on the news this week. Look, I don't take notes. I just watch Harvard. The news. Local student earns one of the highest uh, GPAs at CCSD. Um, Ashley Vasquez Romo, or Vasquez Romo, Vasquez Romo. Uh, is expected to graduate Basic Academy of International Studies in May with a six point five GPA. GPA. One of the highest grade. My Please God. report on that. She's obviously the valedictorian. Uh, and she was taking, uh, oh, advanced placement and international baccalaureate classes. And she was uh, accepted at Harvard, Green City, Yale, Penn, USC, oh, and Vanderbilt. Just... Damn. Damn. Impress <laughs> That's yes, I Ashley. Am. Yes, Ashley. I'm just saying, like, report all the good stuff. Like, it, there there are good things that are happening in our district as well. And so it's important that we highlight that here on the show. It's not mm -hmm. all about the crazy, like, mm -hmm. it's not all about the bad and disruptive stuff. There are positive things that are happening here, and the possibilities are endless for our students. Mm -hmm. So this is a great kudos. I'm going to put this uh, story on uh, uh, on you can make it work page. I'm, uh, I'm going to have Phil do that. Um, Ta -da, thank but, you. Um, because it's really it's really kind of a cute story and it is that's a, needed. This is kind of breaks who, up all of this. Yeah. I, you know, I, I love the I love the kids who are like, "Whoa, chaos around me. I'm going to study, right? <laughs> I'm going to read something something that will help me grow and learn." Yeah. Um, yeah. That's 6.5. 6.5. Yeah. She was taking IB and AP classes. I don't think she was taking anything but. Yeah, yeah that's that's I think that's, I think that's dope. So that's, that's, incredible. Incredible. that's feel good stuff. Like, that, that is feel good stuff. And as we talked about last time we were here, CCSD has one of the best music programs in the country. We need to keep highlighting it. 
really, really, really great music programs. Yeah. Um, and and they won Grammys. They have won. I don't know. Oh. That. Well, I know that. What? It was the instructor. Yeah, maybe an instructor won a Grammy for because we have an instructor, I think at Basic, who composes or not or maybe arranges a lot of stuff. Las Vegas Academy. Okay. Oh, okay, maybe. Yeah. yeah. But and Las also I try not to Foothill <laughs> Foothill's marching band a few years ago was in the Macy's Day Parade. Like, yeah. you know, this is we've got really, really good music programs here. So um so you know. Get your kid into music if you're watching this, and that and and we teach them from sixth grade to eighth grade. They come out, the, you know, it, it, the growth is astonishing, and then the people who want to can follow that into high school. So, um, yes. so yeah, that's that's one of the better things about CCSD, and I hope we keep it right. I don't I hope we don't destroy that too. Um, but I want to talk about Bailey okay. Middle School. Oh, okay. Have you heard about this? This is where the teacher was, I mean, the principal was trying to yeah. hire teachers. So, because we need, because we need more, teachers, because right? we need teachers. We're, how many? 2,000, over 2,000? Not, not quite that. Not, not quite yet. That. Not yet. It's not not yet. The school year. Mm -hmm. Where are we? We're about 1,500. Kind of, it's, it's, it's a point where it's sort of fluctuating. So, I was rounding up. Um, <laughs> so, but they're, 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 they are um, forecasting 2,000 by August. So, um, so, so here we go. We need teachers. Bailey Middle School, it's one of those things. And I've interviewed Bailey Middle School because Daryl Wyatt is one of the few principals who will talk out loud because he's close to retirement, so he doesn't care. Um, and uh, he um, hired some science and math teachers because that's what they need. They are a low-income Title I school. And uh, they are, they, those, those schools can't get and keep teachers, right? I mean, this is part of the problem with the, this, we have this breakup of CCSD. We have, the, we have um, these autonomous school zones. That's all great. But teachers are paid average salary. And um, or the school pays them average salary. But some teachers who have been here longer, Get paid more. The new teachers get paid less. The 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 people who've been here longer are like I'm working at this school in Henderson or uh, Summerlin. I'm not working in your Title One school. And then so so the teachers who come into the Title One schools are paid less. It's a hard job. They're new. They're trying to learn. Um, and so getting teachers to be in those schools is really hard. Um, and, 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 and that's where the teacher shortage shows up mostly, right? Mm -hmm. So Daryl Wyatt took advantage of the J-1 program, which is an agreement that the U.S. has with the Philippines to bring teachers in. And I've, I've seen racist teachers say, no, we don't need those people in here, but that's ridiculous. We need teachers. Um, and for from all accounts, the people who come in are pretty good teachers. So he hired teachers for math and science. But no, CCSD said, we have a limit. We have only 175 teachers total that we can hire in this J-1 program. And so you can't have your math and science teachers. And that is a CCSD limit, right? Like, I'm certain that the U.S. government is not going to let, you know, they have some sort of total limit. But CCSD has said 175 a year because... In five years, when those programs are over and people go back to the Philippines, we don't want to have that hole. And I'm like, but you have a hole because you don't treat teachers well. You don't do anything to retain them. There are more teachers in Southern Nevada with teaching license. There, there are more people in Southern Nevada with teaching licenses who don't teach anymore than there are people who teach in schools. So let's think about that for a minute and the fact that this principal is hustling to bring in people to 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 fill a much needed hole yeah, in his uh, low income community so um why is that we have a question uh, i got a question oh. from miss miss let me call i'm struggling with that I only voted yes for our school district. Where is the weed tax money? I feel tricked. 
Um, they're like 7-Eleven now, so why aren't teacher salaries more? Is a new viewer, so I would like to. Okay, so we tax question. money. Yes. Yeah. We tax money at this point is about um, 150 million dollars. It started out as 67 million uh, in 2017, and it, it keeps it keeps growing. So this is good, but our um, our budget is $6.2 million, CCSD's budget, and $150 million is a drop in the bucket, right? Like, it's like, it's like my ring on this very large table. Um, it adds a little bit of wood to the table, but it doesn't really make a difference. Um, so that's the the weed money is going in and it always went in um it, it there was a little maneuvering the republicans in 2017 were like oh no we want to stop this at the last minute and so and so the democrats went we're going to park the weed money in the in the rainy day. Uh, rainy day fund but we're going to take after the budget was closed they took money from the general fund equal to that amount and put it in into the weed money fund so um, it has always gone towards education. It's just not enough. Not enough. Um, and I and I partly blame the people who who wanted to um, to get it passed because they kind of took advantage of, hey, you know, it'll help education. Um, and then many people believed that this would be the magic bullet, and and it's not. It helps. I mean, certainly you don't turn down 150 million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but it is not enough. not enough. So enough means that we have to have uh, we have to have you, you know uh, we we are two probably two point two billion dollars short. Okay, no, with the weed money maybe we're just two billion dollars short, but we're still short, and so we have to uh, raise in taxes shared, in other ways in a shared across the state. Right, the marijuana money is shared across the state. Yes, the, the marijuana money is shared across the state. It doesn't just so go it's to. It's not like it's just going right. solely to Clark County. Yeah. So, yeah. So even less than that. Uh, amount. Yeah. Right. 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 Less than a hundred thousand dollars goes to CCSD. I, mean, so yes. I encourage you that do partake, like smoke more. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? There are some very common sense things like <laughs> you reset the, and it, and this is, would be a constitutional thing and it got abandoned. It ha got halfway there and got abandoned. But you reset the property tax because in during the recession we just uh, lowered all property taxes and we put a, we put a cap on it. Um, so you reset the property tax so that if you sell your house, the next person who buys it doesn't have the cap on their property tax, mm -hmm. right? You reset it so that if your house is 50 years old, but you updated it, you're 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 now taxed on 2022 dollars, the updated dollars, not the you know 1960 something dollars, 72 dollars. Oh my! Um, so um, so that I mean there are things like that, that you can do, and of course casinos only pay six percent for gambling for gaming. So I'm gonna set that out there and. By the way, the, um, uh, the Raiders, the Raiders don't pay anything. They don't. Pay, there's no. There's no uh, um, entertainment tax that we so collect for so any education. sports. Any sports, and so um, there are a lot of things you can do, but the powers that be in Nevada, Las Vegas, the mining tax. Well, the mining tax actually. Did go up a little bit, but again, it's not as much. Not as much. So yeah, it's about the same as the marijuana tax now. So yes, that is. What is your Phil? question? Um, so do we still have the rainy day fund? Because I know that that was oh, a big fund, and prior, you know, to the pandemic and everything that happened. Wonder if it's still there. The rainy days fund is still there. Is it as heavy? As no. Okay. Uh, the pandemic took a lot out of it. And to be fair, the pandemic um, took a little bit out of education and took a little bit out of safety mm -hmm. education. There was a bill that had, and I always forget it, $72 million towards safety 
measures, uh, and they were probably halfway through when the pandemic started, because this bill came through in, 19, in 2019, and then they suspended that, and they took the money that was left to use for the pandemic. The thing is, though, but they put it back in 2021, partly because we saved money during the pandemic. Like, like the, the state didn't, obviously, the casinos closed, lots of people were laid off, um, and the casinos definitely lost money. But schools who didn't have to pay for air conditioning, who didn't have to pay for maintenance, who didn't have to buy toilet paper, like all of those things, um, they actually saved money. The school district saved money. And it kind of drives me crazy because people can come up to me and go, yes, but um, our CFO uh, was able to balance the books and now we have a higher, uh, I can't savings, whatever it is, right? And I'm like, yeah, we have a higher savings. He said so himself. We have a higher savings because schools were closed. Schools were closed. That's and so he was able to take some of that and put it towards our, our savings fund. So... Yes, yeah, investing in people like um shout out to the cosmopolitan who gave their employees five thousand dollars. Yeah, like, like that. When you're talking about retention, yeah, that's what it looked. Well, like. you know, to be fair, CCSD gave their employees two thousand dollars, and and that was that's they have a lot more employees mm -hmm. than the cosmopolitan does. So, but they haven't given them the two thousand yet, and you have to stay. There are conditions on it, right? You have to have been there. Active too. So yeah. I saw a comment of a teacher who's on um, maternity leave. I said she, she won't be as good. She's not getting it. Wow. Yeah. That's a comment that I saw that is something that I flagged to myself that I need to do research on. Yikes. So yeah, but shout out to shout out to them for, for trying. Um shout out for them for trying. But just moving forward, it's something that we really need to uh, you know, invest in our, invest in our staff. We need to invest in our staff. Inve invest in our staff. Here's the, the thing is, though, right, in, in the 1990s, and I've written about this, in the 1980s, 90s, when we were bringing people in, mostly 90s, what we could promise them was a very robust um, uh, PERS, because people who were coming then could retire with 90% of their income, which is pretty awesome. Um, and now it's about, I think, 75%. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but it's less, right, for people who came in a little later. Um, 75% ain't bad either, to be perfectly honest, as a retirement, especially if you retire after 30 years and you're in your 50s. Um, but um, um, so th there's that part. Cost of living was a lot lower in the 1990s. And now cost of living is a huge problem in Vegas because so many, there are conglomerates that are buying up houses for rental. Yes. Um, so it's hard to get a place to live. It's hard to find a place to live, much less to be able to afford a place to live. So that's a huge thing, especially on a teacher's salary um, or journalist's salary. And, um, so, so, you know, that's a big thing. They're, it's not safe in schools right now. Uh, we have a district that doesn't treat people well. So who wants to come here to not be treated well and then have to, you know, find a place to live? And the most important thing is we had THT in the 1990s was awesome. We could offer them the best insurance that money could, that it didn't cost them a thing to be, to be perfectly honest. THT. THT. Did I say THC? No, you said T. Oh, oh. I may have. Stuck. I may have meant THC. No, you the said The weed that you could get illegally in the 1990s was so much more awesome than what you can get now. I may have meant that in the back of my head, but no, THT, the, the actual health. insurance, was awesome, and um, and you didn't have to pay a thing for it. And that was a big draw to people. Oh, well, now we've got THT in tatters. Um, one of the other things that happened this week is, is uh, Anna Binder looked through the THT audits, which I have not had hey, a chance Anna. to look at yet. Um, Anna is awesome. Like, I, there's there's times when I'm like, oh, I wonder if that's happening. And then Anna will be like, hey, Carrie, do you know this, hap this is happening? Here's the numbers. And I'm like, 
wow. <laughs> so she looked through the THT audits and found that a payroll and benefits went up a lot from 2019 to, two, to 2022, and we don't really know why. She found some other things too, and I'll be looking at that more closely with her. Um, so THT is in tatters, and uh, and we can't find a, a decent place to live for the money we make. Um, and so it's there's not really uh, a a draw, right? Hey, you live in Utah. Come teach in Las Vegas. Why? Right? Like that's mm. that's the issue. And it's not just CCSD that's the problem. Although if they got better and if they could have more insurance and they treated people well, um, it would help a great deal. But um, but we but there's a Las Vegas thing too, right? There's a Las Vegas is becoming much more inhospitable. Uh, and so that's that's a problem. Mm -hmm. well, we have students that have 6.4 GPAs. But we have students that have 6.5 GPAs, yes. 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 A great music program. And we have an excellent music program. And I mean, come on awesome. here. I mean, I'm gonna we are going to start highlighting all the great things that yes. start attracting what we need here. Support school. So, ooh, support a school, support a school. So, we oh, have a support a school with a school. I'm going to put on my glasses. Is this Helen Smith Elementary School? <gasps> Helen Smith Elementary School is in need of a, a palette of white paper, white copy paper, 20 reams of Astro Bright paper, 100 Expo ooh, dry erase markers. Expo, what'd you say? What happened? Phil, oh, what'd you say? A <laughs> hundred glue sticks and one hundred dry erase crayons. I don't know what that dry is. Dry erase crayons. Yeah, really. I don't know what that is. That's it's what technology. That's, That's what, what they it have is. With dry erase crayons. <laughs> Hell, I want some dry erase. What is that? I don't know. Well, so we need to palette, find out. A palette of white copy paper, I think, is like twelve of the cases i'm not certain so i'm um, but, but if you go buy a case of white copy paper i think that's yeah something i might do um i mean yeah. if we can organize 10 people to buy a case yeah. we probably have yeah, we could that's probably exactly it there. that's exactly it like i don't i'm trying to picture uh, when i see a palette how many yeah, of those are on there but yes yeah. transfer so uh this. so yeah helen smith yes and where is helen smith yes do we know Where's Helen Smith? Um, well, that's pretty cool. So support a school is definitely a way that you can do exactly that. Support a school here within our district. We will have a link provided. You can go You can go and search the schools and see what they need. Look up a school that you went to. Look up your alma mater. Look up a school that's in your neighborhood or one that you drive past every oh, okay. day. See if they're on the list. See what they need and drop items off to them. It's uh between it's on the it's uh between Rainbow and Buffalo. Um, on Alta Alpha and okay, Rainbow, Buffalo, Alta Westcliff. Yeah, so it's it's near Walter Johnson Jr. High, if that helps. Uh, it is uh, north of Charleston, so that is um, that is where it is, and and yeah, drops and in. they need paper. Yeah, they need white paper. copy paper, Astro Bright paper, dry erase markers, glue sticks, dry erase crayons. Oh, what other question? What other obstacles does CCSD need to improve to staff stay slash get teachers to move here? What are your opinions on that? Man, it's so many, you know, and even just hearing from teachers um, themselves, of course, of course, pay, right? Pay, respect, mm -hmm. the health insurance, um, finding a, a affordable place to live, even coming here. So did, did it say to attract teachers to come here or to get teachers to, to, move, get here. Teachers to move here? There's going to have to be some serious incentives um because the, even the house incentive to buy a house was till march and then it's gone but there should be more funds like with the esser dollars it's like what what else is happening with 
with those dollars. There are some things happening. You know what? I'm going to put together some stuff that we can talk about for our next um, for our, our, our our next show um, about ESSER dollars because there are some things that the state is doing and there and that the the CCSD is taking advantage of. So I have been like, why aren't we using ESSER dollars to uh, train social workers? And we are. So um, uh, so that's nice to know. And I know I'll put some stuff together so we can talk about that because that's yeah. Can you do a PowerPoint? Can I do can a PowerPoint? Do a... <laughs> oh, don't yes, I can do a PowerPoint. Table. Yeah, we can. I can do a PowerPoint so a that Phil weeks. can run the PowerPoint as we're talking about we these things and I can weeks. point to things and say this is what's happening. This is what's with happening. Dollars. But then we can also survey teachers to see what what do you think could help us get more teachers here. Yeah. yeah, we can do that in some of the different Facebook groups. Yeah. Oh my goodness. We, so the next school board meeting is on May 19th. Yeah. Next Thursday. Next Thursday. Yeah, it's a week away because graduation. Oh my all, gosh. All school board members have to be at the graduation, so yeah. This is, this is, this is really it. Yeah. The school year is wrapping up, so, um, man, I don't know, it's kind of bittersweet. But although the meeting is next week, we'll get back with you all on May 27th. That'll be our final show for the um, season. And so tune in on May 27th, please. And continue to leave your comments here on this thread. We'll jump in and answer them. Mm -hmm. And so we hope you enjoyed the rundown with the fabulous Carrie. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I'm Tamika, and we'll see you next time. Okay, shall we sing a, an outro song? We're singing an outro song to the rundown. To the rundown now, down. We're singing an outro song to the rundown. To the rundown now, now.